The history of European practices determined the definition of art, and, but said, this is a truth, this is not a construct, and therefore you cannot critique this definition. So my interest in mathematics is that it was a full frontal uh, attack on that idea uh, 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 because I, I used a, a strategy of art making that was back then provocative because it's not, it was not supposed to be something that you would use to be creative. My name is Charles Gaines. I'm uh, uh, an artist living in Los Angeles, California. And uh, I was born many years ago uh, in Charleston, South Carolina. My work is based in, in uh, systems. It's a rule-based work where uh, in order to uh, uh, you know, remove my subjectivity from the process of making or creating, I would create a set of rules that would dictate um, the terms and conditions of the making process itself. One of the reasons why I was very suspicious about it, the, the modernist idea of the creative imagination is because I, I felt that uh, you're, if you relied simply upon yourself and what you call your subjectivity, you simply repeat what you know. Uh, so there has to be a, a, a location or a place where un the unknown is allowed into your practice. And th the traditional idea was that this unknown, because everybody had this value of the unknown, but the traditional idea of this unknown was rooted in your unconscious. And you just have to find a way of unpacking and, and releasing your unconscious and you'll, you'll go into territories that you otherwise wouldn't. But I, didn't, I, don't, I never thought that worked. And so. Setting up rules is, is a way of, you know, of building a fire on, firewall around the limits of your imagination. But it also opened up y your access to the world because I said that, well, one of the things that I like to have a theory is that it, it made me think about things in ways that I otherwise would never come to and, 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 and really never realized. Uh, that that uh, it, it took me beyond on what I call myself. This language that takes me beyond my subjective imagination was, was, was mathematics. And so I started working with the grid and, and dealing with a series, of, a series of works where I would, uh, based upon an XY coordinate, develop a, a simple calculation. The calculation itself would produce the rules for the production of a form. And, uh, and so I started working on those drawings, and that series is called the Regression Series. What my interest was is, is to deal with conceptual tropes as a critique. And, I, of, 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 uh, uh, and so therefore the use of numbers and grids was an interrogation, not only of the art practice itself, but interrogation of the culture uh, based upon uh, certain ideological presuppositions having to do with rational thinking. Like the, the, the big one, of course, is that, you know, that there's a bi binary, there's a difference that, <clears throat> that uh, you know, scientists think, think and artists feel. And so if you uh, allow intellectual thought into the, uh, your production of art, then you're undermining the very definition of art. That the, what makes it art is that it's a, it's, based, it's a feeling practice. And so that, that annoyed me because what happened is that, that uh, in, particularly in relation to this binary, that if you're an artist, then you can't, have, you can't think critically. You can't think about the world because if you're engulfed in feelings, you're, you uh, cannot be uh, entertaining concepts and ideas. What, that, why that was a problem for me ideologically is because it uh, 
reinforced a, a general critique that I was having about the, the uh, persistence of transcendental ideas in, in the history of European and Western thought. Uh, because the transcendentalism itself as, as a concept and its use historically uh, was responsible uh, for all kinds of strategies of, of power and the enforcement of power. The one that was uh, the most disturbing to me is that this uh, Howard uses to reinforce the idea of race. That in, it, in fact race was not a, an idea, race was a truth. And that therefore you can't critique it. So the, the Europeans very comfortably put them, themselves in a place of empowerment by saying that we can define this idea of race, which you can't critique. And so I found that modernism did the same thing with art. That uh, the, the history of European practices determined the definition of art, and, but said, this is a truth, this is not a construct, and therefore you cannot critique this definition. Uh, so my interest in mathematics is that was a full frontal uh, attack on that idea uh, 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 because I, I used a, a strategy of art making that was back then provocative because it's not, it was not supposed to be something that you would use to be creative. I decided to make, take that strategy, which is, was numbers and math, as a full frontal attack on this ide ideology. And so to, to say that, yeah, that I can make a rule-based work that produces an effect that's no different from what you do by claiming you're, you're being intuitive. Uh, 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 it's a, as, a, as a critique. And the essential idea that I was undertaking was this idea of visual pleasure. You know, that I was un undertaking the idea that one uh, uh, can see uh, that visual pleasure, the experience it's, itself, is a product of a politics. I thought by taking this rule-based strategy and producing visual pleasure by it, that I could advance the idea that visual pleasure is a construct, is a political construct that's been used by the history of modernism to advance a certain interest. And, 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 and in this case, because of, of who I am and where I am, I thought it was used to preserve the, uh, the, the, the history of European and Western culture as privileged over all other cultural identities, you know, inclu including Asian culture, including African culture. The first thing that I did was, uh, was uh, a purely abstract uh, uh, series of drawings that, uh, where the form itself, the abstract form, is pr produced by uh, the, the simple calculation of numbers that existed on an XY uh, axis. So the result of that calculation gave me the rules for the production of the form, and which pre produced a new, uh, the potential for calculating, uh, which I did in the drawing, which creates the next drawing in the series. And so each drawing in that series is, uh, existed as a, as a product of the drawing before it. And, but then uh, when I was looking at that, uh, that work, it, I couldn't help but to, to identify a certain biological narrative going on, you know, like the idea of cell production and ge genealogical sequences. I, I couldn't uh, uh, look at that without seeing those metaphors. Uh, so I thought that, well, why don't I just take an, uh, on a natural object? The, the tree, it happened because the form, particularly the crown of the tree, but the tree form itself, looked the most like those parabolic shapes that um, I was producing with the, with the purely mathematical calculation. It looked the most like that. So I, I took a picture, photograph of a tree, and then I translated it, it, it into a, what's called today a digital image or a gridded image, uh, where, where the, the, the image of the tree itself, or the, 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 in this case, the photographic image, 
uh, would be presented as numbers. And uh, the, the aggregate of numbers would create the shape of the tree. So I thought that I could use the system to draw a tree rather than to draw it from my, from my uh, imagination or even, you know, just trying to render a tree, uh, which requires a lot, of, a lot from your imagination. And also I could make the image complex, make other uh, markings in order to realize the complexity of the form of the tree by adding more rules. And the rule that I add is that I would just overlay the image of a series of trees and overlay them in different numbers or different colors uh, so that then this, this took, it was <coughs> kind of painting the tree form uh, without, um, <clears throat> uh, by rules, without using my imagination, uh, saying that, well, I think I'll make this part of the tree this color because uh, it's aesthetically pleasing or, or, or my intuition is telling me that I have to do this. I, I had great suspicions about working that way. <coughs> So I, made, I allowed the system to make all of those decisions. So I should say up front that I, I know that I, I created the system from my imagination. So I, I'm not you know, arguing that there is no such thing as the imagination. What I can say about this uh, exhibition is that it's a continuation of uh, an exhibition that I had in Los Angeles, I think about three years ago now. Uh, and uh, where it wasn't, the, the, the Los Angeles exhibition wasn't uh, the first time that I used palm trees as an image. I, uh, my first use of palm trees was back in the, in the, in the uh, late 70s. But um, it represented a more focused interest in uh, trying to develop a a cultural narrative or, or making a cultural context for the, uh, within which these systems operated. So the, the, the exhibition I had in, in, in Fresno happened because I began to think about the location, the very specific locations that I decided to, uh, to go to to, to to photograph and shoot trees. And, uh, and I, I, I sort of rather than uh, just looking for a tree and shooting it. Uh, I thought that, you know, the space or the environment of the, of the tree could, <clears throat> could have some very interesting things to say historically, politically, and, and culturally. The palm trees that these are based upon come from um, uh, an area called Palm Canyon that is uh, just south of Palm Springs in California. And the, the, this area was really a Native American reservation. It, it, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's uh, run by the Native Americans. So what, I thought that within the, the, the context of our nat national discourse, I say national the, the discourse in the, going on in the United States about colonial practices and so forth and the, the whole history of, of taking land away from Native people. Uh, I thought th that the palm tree is, a, is an iconic referent of, of that idea, which usually used to, to, to talk about, you know, like beaches and margaritas and, you know. <laughs> you know. Uh, but, uh, so I, so that's why I particularly chose that site because of the, that kind of significance of the, the, the natural environment. Hoping that without making, necessarily making comment about making a particular political point about it, that I was uh, giving voice or giving representation to a certain practice. And uh, which was, as I said, pro problematic practice of, of the history of the native population in, in the United States. Uh, so in that series, I named the drawings after these uh, uh, particular native tribes in, in the area uh, in order to create that context. So this series is a continuation of that.
the difference is that the, uh, the work that I did in Los Angeles were what I called the, the, the grid boxes, the plexi boxes, where uh, the, the, the photo of the tree uh, sits in the, in the back panel of the box and on the face of the box in plexi, the gridded image of the tree is painted. Uh, I, uh, in this one, I uh, created the whole uh, inform and image in, in, in watercolors. It was interesting to do that for me because it, 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 um, it, was, it was like uh, reflecting on the work I was doing in the, in the late 70s and early 80s, where, where almost all the work was just graphic and that made it with ink and color ink. Uh, it, it didn't develop that dimensional property and those properties that reminds you of, uh, reminds you of painting, even though I never think of these things as paintings. Uh, but it, but it uh, sort of calls up that, that practice. And I'd like to do that because um, it's, it is, I guess it's totally personal. Uh, when I started this series of work, I got uh, the, the, the conceptual work, I got a lot of uh, uh, attention from dealers and I, and I was uh, uh, well represented, you know, my, my first galleries were some of the, the premier galleries of the, of, of, of the day in the 70s, which was John Weber and Leo Castelli and Margot Levin and so forth. But uh, curators and writers weren't interested in the work. So, so, so ultimately, uh, I continued to exhibit because you know I, I found a much more receptive audience among strangely art dealers, but but I, I, I couldn't the work just would not enter the general discourse, and uh, uh, and, and 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 for long periods there, there was a period where uh, I think that there was absolutely you know, I mean I, I couldn't give the work away. Like, so, which is it's interesting to say that that because the work seven or eight years ago it seemed to have found an audience, and now it's it's essentially you can't buy it. <laughs> I mean, you can, but you have to be on a waiting list, and so so. So I was thinking about that because it just, to me, sort of reminded us of how like insane the, the art world and the art market is. That if anybody thinks there's a, uh, a plan or a pattern or a, a strategic way to approach art, that person should be like, you know, put in a, an asylum because it, 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 none of it makes any sense and it, it's not supposed to make, I don't think it's supposed to make sense. I mean, it can make sense because culturally we get together and we agree that certain things make sense. But in the big picture, it reminds me of that. So when I return to the, the, the early practices like that, and I've done it a couple of times, it, it, it just, as a, on a very personal level, it reminds me how we actually should think about, you know, the, not, it, it, maybe not art in general, but the idea of art as a, social and community discourse and how value is constructed around it that uh, we should keep we should keep that keep that in mind